My name is Rita Laetza, and I'll be presenting our work on blind manipulation of deformable linear objects based on force information from environmental contacts. Deformable linear objects such as cables are found across many challenging industrial applications, most notably cable harness production. The yellows don't really oppose deformation in most directions except when being tensioned. Um, and humans tend to use this observation to simplify the sensing and manipulation problems when handling such objects. So when we have a cable in between our hands, then we can feel the tension when we are pulling it, and we can assume that the shape in between the two grass points is a line. And also, if we then push that cable and have some sort of obstacle, we can feel a change in, in tension and estimate the new shape. So it is based on this simple observation that we propose a graph representation of the object, which then is used to define nine force-based manipulation primitives. The goal of this project is to see how far we can get with force torque sensing alone, but I would like to point out that in any real application, vision will still play a big role, especially for handling um, errors. So when something unexpected happens, it's very hard to recover with force alone. So the proposed representation is summarized as a graph uh, G and um, constant of the weight per unit length, which is either measured before or known, or even just measured using the motion primitives as a first step. Once we have that, then we have the path graph that is constantly updated as we manipulate the object, and it contains a set of vertices and edges. Vertices are defined in a uh, set order. So anytime that the new vertex is added to the model, then uh, the indices need to be updated. And also um, here we can see that vertex 3 was added in order to formulate this clipping motion. So when the grippers were above the fixture, then we added a new vertex to define that we want to have it clip through this uh, object. And we can also see that each vertex contains information about the position, uh, orientation, and also a point mass estimate of that uh, vertex based on the row constant. Each edge naturally contains information about the distance between two points, as well as a measure of the sag to evaluate how accurate this distance is. So if there's a lot, a lot of tension, there begins to have to, to be a bit of sag, which then means that we cannot trust our distance and we should tension more. Uh, we also have a scalar force, that is the force felt along that edge, and an estimate of the elasticity, which is needed mostly for these tensioning uh, primitives, which can easily lead to a emergency stop uh, trigger uh, with the robot, and we want to try to avoid that. So the nine motion primitives we have proposed are essentially tensioning uh, primitives or sliding uh, and clipping primitives. Um, they are subdivided into coordinated control when the grippers are moving in a relative motion or individual control when we have a single gripper uh, manipulating the object. The most important primitives naturally are the tensioning ones and here we demonstrated with more detail how we can see that the sag is being constantly um, estimated and it shows in red when we have too high sag and in green when sag is none and we can assume a linear edge. We also have here a demonstration of all of the primitives on the real robot. We also tested our contact point estimation, which is necessary to update the vertices. And we see here the error decreasing as the common filter uh, observes more data, and also a sudden change that is then quickly uh, recalculated. So we can see here how, as the robot moves, the um, variance of the estimate becomes smaller. And then finally, we test all of this on a cable harness experiment with hard-coded primitives, which are shown here in the bottom. Thank you.